this, I will not be able to see chat nor um, who's coming in. So I got you. That's why I'm here. I'm moderating and workshopping. Got you. My moderator and co presenter. Awesome. All right. Let's get this started then. Hello, guys. Welcome to Kiwanis Family Relations, SCC edition by the two DKFF committee members who are here today, myself and Miu. So hello, I'm Emily Real. I'm the current District Kiwanis Family and Foundations Chair and a past member of the DKFF committee and also a, the last year's immediate past Foothill Lieutenant Governor. And hi everyone, I'm Miu. I am the immediate past District Kiwanis Family and Foundations Chair, so Emily's predecessor. Um, I go to UC San Diego, currently a third year, um, and I also served the year before that as the Paradise Liaison on the DKFF Committee. So today's agenda includes, we're gonna go over the Kiwanis Family branches, why we should build relationships with the Kiwanis Family, some pivotal Kiwanis family events, a Kiwanis family survival guide, and also at the end, we're gonna have a Q&A session where you guys can ask any questions that we didn't answer during the presentation. Yeah, so uh, before we jump into all the nitty gritty, we just wanted to make sure that the basics of Kiwanis family is um, being presented here today. So we'll first talk about the Kiwanis family branches um, and we can go to the next slide. So um, just keep in mind that uh, all of these branches are under the whole big Kiwanis family umbrella. First, we have K-Kids. They are the elementary school branch. Um, and there's the website. So if you have any questions about that, about them, check it out. Um, we also have the Builder, Builders Club. They are the middle school branch. There are 45,000 students um, and they um, are awesome to work with. So, um, yeah. And then we also have Key Club and Qwins, which y'all probably may have heard. They are the high school branches. Um, and they both, uh, Qwins is actually the 32nd district of Key Club International. And you may be working alongside them. So make sure that you know the different Key Clubs in your area um, moving forward in your term. And also the Qwins, yes. And finally, we have the adult branches. So we have Kiwanis. Um, they are the ones help, helping support Circle K events and activities. We have some Kiwanians in here. Um, and then we also have the Action Club. This Action Club is the only service club for adults with disabilities. Um, so again, if you have any questions about any of the Kiwanis family branches that were talked about here today, make sure to check out their website and get to get to know them. Yeah, and yeah, just like what Emily said, like top, you know, drop in the chat, like. What clubs are you a part of in the past? You want to know. Um, and just seeing all these different branches, know that you are currently a part of an organization that has 550,000 members um, that span over 80 plus countries. Um, and we all are here, you know, um, regardless of age, uh, ability, and nationality, all here to, to form the Kiwanis family. Uh, and we hope that you all can take advantage of the Kiwanis family uh, resources and, and be able to support and ask for help from the different branches um, in your different respective areas. And I will hand it over to Emily. So let's talk about why you should build relationships. And also before we um, go through this, I just wanna say shout out to Division 35 West Key Club, my home division. So building relationships. Almost every Circle K club is sponsored by a Kiwanis club and they help us in a lot of ways. And of course, Kiwanis being our sponsor uh, is our parent organization. And some of the ways that they help us are by funding, providing some service opportunities, like perhaps like letting us volunteer at a rib fest or one of their car shows, um, providing mentorship and adulting advice because we're kind of getting into adulting a little rough networking, some industry knowledge, and even job opportunities on occasion. That's of course, if you do the best job at building the relationship with your Kiwanians. And of course, Kiwanians are always here to support us. So it's important that we support them too. Now, 
Let's get into some mem mentorship. So consider starting a mentorship program within your club by connecting Circle K to professionals within their field. Kiwanians are further along in their careers and they can provide insight into their own industry. And if you wanna connect someone newer to their field, try reaching out to your local Young Professionals Club, a type of Kiwanis club aimed at young people just entering their careers. It's especially important, there aren't too many of them, but if you search hard enough, especially because there's a huge one called California Young Professionals, um, you will find one close to you. Additionally, with networking, this can, be, this can become, or this can come before or after mentorship. Think of things like Professional Expo at District Convention. This event was staffed by almost entirely Kiwanians and alumni. Attending Kiwanis events is a gateway to meeting others in their, your own field of interest. And I especially want you guys to encourage your own members to use this opportunity to expand their network or bring members to the to bring members to them in a networking event. Additionally, it's important to know that Circle K can't do everything alone. As like Joyce is talking about in her presentation, your school provides a lot of grants as well as other local organizations, but it might not always be enough. Reaching out to your Kiwanis club can see if they allocated funds for your club and help support you guys in going to things like you know, Circle K International Convention, what's it, which is coming up soon, or even supporting different projects that you do like March for the KFH. Additionally, just wanna shout this out, the CNH Children's Fund has grants for projects like PTP, and they're hoping to establish new grant opportunities within the next year. Apply, it could really help your next service project. So one of the reasons I joined Circle K is because of members reaching out to me and making me feel included in this whole Kiwanis family. So giving back to the youth branches of the Kiwanis family is just making Circle K a more inclusive environment for the future. And some ways we can do that is by including student mentoring, reviewing personal statements, and hosting a key to college at our own club or within the division. We're gonna be talking a bit more about that later. Something else you can do that's a little more um, hands-on and a lot takes a lot more time is co-sponsoring a builders club or K-Kids in your area. This takes a lot of time, but it's a great way to connect with middle school or elementary school students nearby. Additionally, now it's time to maintain them. So Kiwanis Family Reps, this is your time to shine. This isn't just Kiwanis Family Chairs, it's anyone from your Circle K Club. So communication, it, is often by attending meetings and keeping with your Kiwanis, your Kiwanis advisor up to date on club activities. If you miss a meeting, that's okay, but still send an email letting them know your updates. Take the opportunity to brag a bit about your own club's accomplishments because they'll love it. And honestly, it's a great way to shout out your own club for the hard work that you guys do. It's important to also know to invite your own club members to these events. If your club is a modified version of like the MRP, club re rewards or family points, I highly suggest adding in a section that rewards Kiwanis family events. It's a great way to subtly encourage that connection. Um, and you should also invite your advisors to Circle K events too. Show them that what we can do. So you wanna attend a key club DCM. First step is to notify your LTG or the liaison. Let them know where, when, and who is interested exactly. Next, they'll shoot an email over to the respective LTG and their advisor with a list of interested members. Just something to keep in mind is that if you're bringing a large enough group, you may be asked to submit an ERF ahead of time. ERFs need to be submitted far in advance, so if this is an event that's happening a couple days away, it might be too late to attend that exact event. Maybe think of something far enough in the future. And once you're, in food and pr once you're approved, you're all set to go. Remember to take this opportunity because virtual meetings have opened new opportunities to meet up and attend DCMs. Take advantage of it and try to attend more things than you normally would. And I'll pass it on to Miu for this portion. Yes, so to strengthen your relationship with the other Kiwanis family branches, we recommend um, hosting events with them so that you're able to partner and create a project together. Um, and in the next slide, um, some uh, joint events that you can do together are key to college. These are college workshops for high schoolers. We also have key to life. Um, these are just really, really helpful. Um, this is an opportunity for Kiwanians to give workshops for college students about um, adulting and whatnot. Uh, we also have Kiwanis takeovers. So this is um, a way for you to introduce your club to a sponsoring Kiwanis club and or 
other Kiwanis clubs within your area. Um, and what you're doing during a Kiwanis takeover is basically you're um, moving the meeting forward um, and whatnot as a Circle K member and just getting to meet all the different Kiwanians within that club. And then we also have Kiwanis one day and I will have Emily talk about that because I know she hosted one last year and then any other events that she could think of, yeah. So Kiwanis Wednesdays are really cool because it's an opportunity to bring together a bunch of different branches. For me, I was able to bring together, I believe, Builders Club, K Kids, Key Wins, Key Club, and Kiwanis under one roof. And that's something that I really could only do virtually. And what we did is we ended up doing cards for the KFH, which was a project that ended up benefiting all branches of the Kiwanis family and connected us closer to a project that we all work on under CNH Kiwanis, which is the Kiwanis Family House. So with Kiwanis One Day, it typically happens on the first Saturday of April, which I'm sorry has already passed, or the last Saturday of um, the last Saturday of October. However, Kiwanis One Days, you don't necessarily have to have them in this time period. You can always have something modified like a Kiwanis Family Day. These are just the days that are set in stone by Kiwanis International and CNH Kiwanis to allow us th to have these great events together. But don't let this discourage you if these events or these days are don't work for your club. Just find ways that you can work with your Kiwanis family and you could even have something small like just working with your Kiwanis, like your sponsoring Kiwanis group or a local key club and your Kiwanis just to have something that works and benefits your local community. And um, on that note, we also have Key to College. So this was just mentioned earlier. These are workshops for high school Kiwanis family branches, whether it's Key Club or for Kiwins. And this is an opportunity for us college students to be able to make an impact in our local communities by going over personal statements, maybe talking about personal finance, what you did to make sure that you're able to afford college. Um, and some um, clubs may choose to host divisional key to colleges. Um, so you can have representatives from different types of schools, whether it's a community college, CSU, UC, private, whatnot, and having them in a panel style and talking about their college experiences. You know, how do they choose a major? What made you decide to go to this school over this one? Um, and just being able to answer a lot of questions that we ourselves probably had when we were high school seniors. Um, so key to colleges are a really, really great event to host. And I recommend it to um, all of the different Circle K clubs to do it. It's just a great way for you to be able to bond with the high schoolers. And who knows, maybe some of them um, might be interested in joining Circle K after you visit their school. You never know. Um, and also just a way to make sure that, you know, you're also able to work alongside Kiwanians who would want to support your Key to College or College panel events. Something to add with the Key to College is that they can also be very inclusive of transfer students. So if you're looking to recruit some transfer students as well from different organizations or work with other local uh, community colleges in your area, it's a great way to connect those students to your college, especially if you know they're going to be transferring there next year. Because I know as a transfer student that a lot of us don't get taught some of the skills that you might need at a four-year university, and it's a great way to connect with those students. Uh, moving on, we're just going to be talking about the event request form. So this is kind of like the nasty thing that a bunch of people will tell you is like the obstacle that's stopping you from hosting all these great events. But in reality, ERFs or event request forms are really short. And even though they're considered a great obstacle, they're not nearly as bad as they're made out to be. They're simply a piece of paper. And if you have all the necessary steps, you're good to go. The biggest issue with ERFs is that they're due three weeks prior to the event. And of course, earlier the better. And this is because the approval process for ERFs takes a ton of time and has to go through a lot of different people. Now, I believe um, Patty and the rest of the Qantas committee is working really hard this year to make ERF approvals go by quicker, but still, it's really important that you guys get these out of at least five weeks in advance, I'd say, especially if you're inviting members from the other Kiwanis family branches. Um, so if you weren't really sure what ERFs are because you're pretty new, it, just know that they're a form that must be completed or approved before an event can be publicized outside of the club's immediate membership. So for, I'll give an example like Go West. 
Um, Go West can be public or can be publicized within Pasadena City College, but we can't advertise to anyone outside of our own club or like we couldn't advertise to like UCSD or anyone else because we didn't send in an ERF yet. Once that ERF is approved, we can start advertising to those other divisions. So another thing is that when you turn in your ERF, you should ideally CC your divisional liaison and LTG. This is because it helps move the process forward and the LTG or divisional liaison can point out any errors in your, in your form before if Kiwania needs to point them out and you can make a correction. Um, and when you're turning in the ERF, make sure it says ERF approval needed or something that shows that what you need um, immediately. Also, make sure to send it into your RA before officially sending it out. This catches a lot of mistakes that you might make on the first time around, especially if you're sending it immediately to someone like the district administrator. But I just want to let you guys know that we're currently going through an ERF revision, so hang tight as we receive some more details on how that will work. For now, follow your RA's lead or your region advisor's lead. If they say you need an ERF, fill one out, even if it's an online event. And please, any major events or fundraisers should have an ERF. So anything like, you know, Quad DCM that the Northern Divisions hosts will need an ERF and make sure to send that out ahead of time. Now we're just gonna go into a little KFAM survival guide. So these are some tips and tricks that like me and I have learned um, as KFAM chairs and on the district uh, KFF committee. So the first thing, professionalism is important. Introduce yourself like you're networking with a future employer because that could be the case if you play your cards right. So first off, email is a great way to establish communication. Make sure you let them know who you are by introducing yourself as a Circle K member, utilizing your position if, for example, you're introducing yourself as a Kiwanis family chair, and also talking about what the purpose of the communication is. If you're introducing another person, you can use the template below. Hi. Or like, I'll say, hi, Miu, I hope you're doing well. I'd like to introduce you to, for example, Ping, a Circle K member and current Foothill Lieutenant Governor. I've CC'd Ping onto this email in hopes of starting a conversation about um, having a joint Kiwanis family event in the division. So that's an example of how you guys can use this like email template within your own communications. You don't always have to do it like this. This is just a very like bare way to do it, but it's a great start that I think you guys can try. Additionally, with communication tips, it's important that with any Key Club and QNs member, you always follow the laws of three. Every communication needs a Kiwanis advisor in the loop, either your own or a Key Club advisor. Better if you guys have two. So, this is because it's for your own safety and the safety of the key clubbers. We're not th saying that you're gonna do anything, but it's just important that you guys keep communication and in the loop of like responsible adults, especially those that are background checked like Kiwanians. So someone that could be like responsible, for example, is your Circle K RA. So for Foothill, our example is like Grace Chi, your, the key club RA. So the RA for that specific key clubber um, or your own Kiwanis advisor. So also remember that when in doubt, CC it out. And I just wanna like talk about something that isn't on the slides, but it's a little more mundane. If you plan to reach out to Builders Club and K-Kids, only discuss plans through their Kiwanis or faculty advisor. They are minors and they're in middle school and elementary school. So it's important that you're reaching out to someone that's trustworthy and that has already made contact with the administration at school ahead of time. Their contact info is usually kept by the sponsoring Kiwanis Club if you guys do need to reach out and don't have contact with them already. Also, if you're not a KFAM chair and you're here at this presentation, that's not a problem. KFAM relations is never a one person job. It's a team effort. Board support is always important with Kiwanis family because what the board shows is what ends up happening within the club. So, Collaborate when you can. Work on projects together. Also, attend and support Kiwanis family events. If your KFAM chair asks the board chat, hey, I'm coming to this KFAM event or this KFAM meeting today. Does anyone want to come? If you guys are free, just take the moment and like take the moment, spend an hour out of your day to attend a Kiwanis family meeting with them. It will make a world of difference. 
Additionally, model good behavior, show some enthusiasm to be there and also display proper etiquette. So for example, if you're going to a place and it says business professional is required, wear business professional. Don't wear casual clothing just because you're the guest. Remember that we're modeling and we're a representative of our club as well. Finally, I just wanna talk about some ways that you guys can collaborate with others on your board. For vice presidents and service chairs, think about joint service projects you guys can work on with your KFAM chair or the Kiwanis family, or some continuous projects you can set up with the K family. An example from PCC is that we work with the South Pasadena Kiwanis to serve food at the Ronald McDonald House. If this is something that sounds interesting to you, reach out to your Kiwanis and talk about events that you guys can set up to work on together. With a membership development and education chair, think about like collaborating on a key to life or some alumni in a networking events. And for publicity and marketing, media, all of those people to combine, think about Kiwani and shout outs, Kiwanis appreciation videos. And something that we also didn't mention is talking about like collaborating with your social chair to work on some Kiwanis appreciation banquets or other events like a Kiwanis family barbecue. Great. So now we're just like gonna go into a quick Q&A session. If anyone has any questions towards me or Miu, either about the presentation itself or kind of like situations you guys have been in that you need help with. Yeah, you guys can ask it in the chat or um, you guys can raise your hands and you can answer. Any questions, comments? I don't know if any of the Kiwanians here want to add on to how um, Circle Cares can um, build relationships with you, just let us know. Um, but yeah, this is just, just a platform where we can all hopefully interact and engage in. So ask away. <laughs> Also, I just want to appreciate how cute Ryan looks with the filter on. Ryan, you look so cute. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so we do have a question um, that was PM to me. It's, if your home club hasn't been attending KFAM meetings, what are some suggestions to engage them to attend? So Miu, would you like to take this one first? Definitely, yeah. So something um, that you can do if you haven't already is, to personally like invite, not just send in a group chat or send in the Facebook group, like, hey, like we're having a, a KFAM meeting happening. Um, you can even individually uh, message your board member saying like, hey, like I wanna go to this event, like will you come with me? And that's how I've always like, um, when I was a KFAM chair, I'd always individually message people, I think, I'm not going to say puts pressure on them, but it's just like, it's nice when you know that somebody is thinking of you and somebody wants to invite you to something. Um, I think that answers your question, but I don't know if that fully answered at all. Emily, if you wanna. Yeah, I mean, I talked about some ways that you can work with your board earlier, which is like actually a lot giving incentives towards like people who go out of their way to attend these events. But I think in general, yeah, personal outreach. Um, and if that isn't working, I think you really should talk, have a talk with your president about the situation and just like say, hey, I would really appreciate if some people attended with me or if you'd attend with me. Because honestly, if the president goes out, it sets a great example for the rest of the board as well. Uh, and then I think that answers it. But another question that we got is, how do you deal with people who are unresponsive to your emails? Well, firstly, um, I have an email tracker that I installed. I think that's really helpful because you can see if people saw the email and it's really important if you're a, like, if you're, um, a Kiwanis family chair to know if people are willing to respond to you, if they're reading it, maybe it's not just an issue with like, your email and then not responding, they're just not seeing it in general. But as far as like people being unresponsive, it really depends who it is. Um, I usually just like 
I usually either try to, if it's like um, a Kiwanian from my home club, usually I'll just go out to their meetings instead because maybe email isn't the best way for them to communicate. Uh, and when it comes to people like talking with like, you know, key club LTGs, sometimes I'll talk to their RA or I'll talk to one of their like counterparts and see, hey, is something going wrong with, like, is something wrong? Like, is there another way I can approach them? Would you be down to like sit down and like talk together? Or like I talked to one of their advisors about it too. Um, you do you have anything to add about that? You, you basically covered it. I was going to actually go over the email tracker. So it works out. Yeah. Email trackers, honestly, I, I recommend it. Ryan recommended me one. He can probably drop the name down in the chat. Yeah. What is the best way to reach out to Key Club and Key Wins Clubs? Also, is it necessary to CC an RA in all forms of communication? Um, I would say it's not necessary to CC an RA, but you should CC an advisor um, in all forms of like communication with minors. So if you're reaching out to like Key Club and Key Wins, definitely have an advisor in there. It doesn't necessarily have to be your RA, but it has to be someone who's a Kiwanis advisor or a Kiwana, like a Kiwanis member who is familiar with both groups and can watch over the conversation and make sure everything's appropriate. Uh, the best way to reach out to Key Club and Key Wins Clubs, um, Miu, do you want to take that one? Yeah, definitely. So the best way that I would recommend is through um, either your like Circle K RA connecting you to um, the Key Club RA and having that conversation first and saying like, hey, like, you know, we want to have an event with X, Y, like this club um, and sending emails that way. Or you can also ask um, your LTG, your LTG should have information or should be connected with the various LTGs in the area, regardless of the Kiwanis Family Ranch. Um, so uh, if you do want to go to the, uh, the DCMs, like I would recommend that. I think there was a slide earlier about that, Emily. So I think that was should work. And if you have any other tips, Emily. <laughs> it's somewhere. Uh, well, it's, it's about like mainly attending Cubans and Key Club DCMs, but that's the slide. Um, as far as like reaching out to Key Club and Key Wins, I really like attending their, their sponsoring Kiwanis um, meetings or their, you know, sponsoring division meetings. So when I was an LTG, the best way that I reached out to my counterparts is honestly by attending those meetings because then we could like interact kind of like through a screen and through like an environment surrounded by Kiwanians. And it was the closest thing to, you know, in person that we could get, but it was a great way for them to like see me, talk to me, know that like, oh, we're just like trying to have a joint event, st stuff like that. Um, and at those meetings, I was also able to make some presentations and you can always ask your Kiwanians if you can be like, hey, um, I wanna just talk like, talk about, you know, having these joint events and reaching out to people and offer like my email address in case anyone wants to collaborate. And I feel like that's a great way to kind of start that, uh, that conversation. Yeah. No problem. Uh, do we have any other questions? If we don't have one, real quick, um, if the Kwanians are down for it, I'd like to see if I can stop sharing my screen. Um, would the Kwanians be down to just introduce yourselves in the room so we can get to know you? Yeah. Uh, would anyone like to go first? Emmanuel? Hi, all. For those who don't know me, my name is Emmanuel Escobar. I am a Kwanian from the Hero Caster Valley Kiwanis Club. Now also, but, but I've been in the Kiwanis Friend for almost 10 years, being first a key clubber from D12 East and a circle care from Cal City East Bay in the Golden Gate Division. But I've been a Kiwanian since 2018, so I'm just pretty much one of the younger Kiwanians down here in the call. Well, congratulations. Glad you came from Circle K and went into Kiwanis. Uh, Dave, would you like to go next? 
I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if Dave can hear me. Uh, but would any other Kiwanians like to introduce themselves? I think we got one more. All right. Well, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate all the Kiwanians that came. Um, I think I'll just introduce him, but we do have um, Paradise's region advisor here, Dave Whitaker. Um, he's a new region advisor, so I hope you guys can welcome him with open arms. But yeah, um, if you guys have any more questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. I'm gonna go back to sharing my screen and get this presentation done with. All right, so just wanna go over a couple of resources that you guys can go to um, after, I guess, contacting us. So the first thing is there is a resource por portal on the CNH Circle K website. If you click the little bar that says resources and scroll down, you're gonna see a little KFAM thing. That's gonna have manuals and everything from transitioning to Circle K to holding a Kiwanis takeover. A lot of these things are outdated. Um, so I will be sending out uh, a newer version that me you made last year, which is updated with a lot of new information. Um, and of course, you guys always have the Kiwanis Family and Foundations Committee. Um, and of course, if you guys are interested, consider becoming a liaison or an EA because it was a great opportunity for me, um, even though I was serving as like Foothill LTG at the same time. Um, and yeah, I think Miu, you wanna talk about your experience as EA real quick? Yes, so being part of the KFF committee and also being the executive assistant, you really get to like help like support each division as an EA, um, which in itself is a really rewarding experience because you're not just helping one division, but you're helping um, all of them with their KFAM relations. Um, maybe what that would entail would be like, you know, looking over somebody's email before they send it out to an LTG or to the different Kiwanis branches um, and whatnot, or just creating graphics in general. Um, maybe even uh, making sure that each KFAM chair and or representative at each club has the necessary resources that they need, um, templates and whatnot, so that they um, are successful in whatever event that they're trying to do, especially if you need some help with the ERFs. Um, so I would recommend applying and I mean, I'm probably going to have to talk about this to, uh, tomorrow during the committee panel anyway, but if you are interested, um, yeah, I'll be talking about what committee experience is like. I think it's really fun. Um, and as for the resources, yes, the ones on the website are up, kind of not up to date, but um, like, feel free to reach out to both me or Emily, like, we are resources for you. Also reach out to your um, club advisors, like your Kiwanis, sponsoring Kiwanis club uh, members, they always will have great insights for you. So if you have any questions, reach out to them. Um, yeah, like you have so many like people supporting you um, this term. So take advantage of that. Like ask a lot of questions if you have any. Um, if you, even if you don't have any now, you will later, most likely. So um, yeah, I don't yeah. know if I miss anything. <laughs> You're always going to learn a lot as KFAM chair. I feel like it's the position where I grew the most. And even if you guys aren't KFAM chairs, just serving as like representatives to the Kiwanis family, it's a big step. And it's also one that I think is really rewarding because you get to meet so many amazing people, hear so many amazing stories, and just get to meet like a whole cast of characters that you would not have met otherwise. It's great, I promise. But yeah. Um, if you still have any questions, comments, or concerns, I dropped our emails right there. Um, I took over the K family email. So, uh, if you guys want to contact me, you can use emilyreal.ck at gmail.com or kfamily at cnhcirclek.org. And for me, it's mu.ucsdcki at gmail.com. And of course, me you drop the workshop sign in and the link to the club bonding so that's going to be happening um, soon make sure to sign in before then and 
yeah, uh, I will go back to playing some Victoria's music for all of you. Yeah, also, um, yeah, I just wanted to say thank you for coming out. And if you have any questions about KFAM communication styles, professionalism, my committee made a video last year. Um, and I don't know if I can show it here uh, right at this moment, but go ahead, go I can ahead. send it to you. <laughs> I, think you can, I think you can show it to you. We have time. We have time. <laughs> I don't know if I'm emotionally prepared for that, but sure, we can we can show it. Um, but we did we we showed this at Decon, I think. So that was a fun time. Um, my committee last year was just a great bunch of bunch. Yeah, we were a great bunch. So I don't know. Let me see if I can find that <laughs> real quick. I don't know. Hmm. Gosh, it's just me exposing myself at this point, but it's fine. Oh, yeah, I will stop the recording now so that I...